Yes, yes, and welcome to Vasily's Garden, folks. Well, we're right into spring, that's for sure, because our trees have all finished flowering, or most of them have, and they're setting fruit. So I thought I'd touch base on apples, pears, well, all fruit trees, in fact, what you need to do to look out for. And if you've got a big mutt like this one here, uh, show you. <laughs> uh, well, back to the trees. All right, that's enough, mate. Now, he's, he's really comfortable with this. Go away. Come on. Go. We're going to cut out now. I have to cut this out. Wasting too much time. Back on the topic. This apple tree's set fruit. Most of it's done. A lot of you have been emailing me asking me when's the best time to actually cover the trees and how to cover them and how to protect them from the dreaded codling moth on apples and pears. So, well, when it comes to actual covering the trees, you should never, and if you have, nor to you, because if you've covered it with netting, it's gonna make it all that more difficult for the pollinators, whether they're bees, hoverflies, and or other, that like to fly in and go to the flowers to collect the pollen to help set and pollinate the fruit for you. So that's why I've left this uncovered, and this one's been my testing tree, in fact, as far as protecting it from codling moth and other problems that can occur on apple trees. And I've got the framework here from the last few years that I keep up, but do take the netting off. But now, as you can see, the flowers have set. And there's, there's hundreds of them, if not thousands. It's not gonna keep every single flower. The tree itself will naturally thin out some of the weaker flowers or fruit that come on the tree. And obviously it will keep as much as it can, but if it stresses a tree too much, it will drop a lot of fruit and or make them a lot smaller. So rather than having, let's say a hundred apples, we've got 500 apples. If they were only a hundred, they'd be nice and large, which is what a lot of people like. Or I'm gonna have 500 apples, which are gonna be small, which is what I like. Now I'm not gonna stress the tree out as far as trying to make it keep every single fruit. Yeah, I'll go through, thin it out, and you can see the density in here. That's no good. See, all this in here, when you get flowers like that, A, they'll fall off on their own, as they are already, because they're not getting the sunlight and the warmth they need to be able to set properly. And B, they'll actually get diseased if they do set properly. Here's an example of a fruit that has actually set and is starting to grow. So you can see it forming already. That's the blossom end of the fruit there, and it's obviously connected to the plant there. Whereas around here, a lot of other little ones, they're all just falling off. So don't be excited too much. Well, it's nice to be excited to see flowers all over your tree, be an apple, pear or plum but it will thin itself out on its own if it can't keep it, and especially when it's got thousands upon thousands. Now, to protect it from the codling moth, I'm gonna reiterate this, and I'm sure you can go back to our previous videos to discuss it and see what I've said. You put a tree band around the base of the trunk, and that's using Glad Wrap, or if you like a non-stick sort of tape, uh, you can wrap around and fix it on there properly, so then you can apply what we call tree guard. And some people like using Vaseline or something else that's quite sticky or tacky, but tree guard is quite safe to apply onto the, uh, onto the tape or the Glad Wrap, so you don't have direct contact with the actual bark of the tree. I personally don't like doing that, so I've got my guard there. Second to that, and it's just sitting here from the last season, and you can see the netting's on the ground as well, is a codling moth trap. I'm not gonna show you, well, I'll have a look at the mess in there. <laughs> okay, I wasn't gonna show you, but that's last season's trap, or card, sticky card, that obviously with the wind's got nothing but dust and uh, leaves on it. And here is, the lure, that's the lure that comes with the kit. We may be out of stock of these folks online, but that doesn't mean you can't go to your local garden center and get some, and I'm sure many of them do stock this product. If not, just stay tuned, because we'll, well, you can just press on notify me when it's in stock on the actual product itself, and you'll receive an email once it's back and restocked up again. So the, hang these on or around the tree. I wouldn't actually hang it in the tree, because you don't want to attract the actual uh, codling moth into the tree because it'll pass by a few apples and then end up going to the apple instead of the yard uh, trap. So hang it just on the outside of the tree, whether it's north or south, east, west. You may put two on if you like, if it's a bigger tree, uh, that's what's recommended. And after that, you can spray and cover. Now spraying, what I've done in the past is CGWS and it's worked tremendously well in 
reducing the amount of infection. I can't say it's going to guarantee 100% because I can't control how you spray your trees. And at the end, you don't want to spray too much. And as we're talking, as we're talking, side note, I haven't been in here for probably two weeks and it's right next to the house. Yes, I know. I walk past all the time. I have a glance or a glimp, uh, glimp, glimp inside. Is that the word? Glance. Glance inside. Since I can't speak, I'll just show you. And what's happened is weeds have popped up everywhere. We've got piles of weeds everywhere that I've just collected. I'm going to give to the sheep, but I just noticed this. This is part of the reason why I said I just walk in here and sometimes you don't have a close look at your tree. And before you realise, this is what happens. That looks like oh, normally woolly aphid. This time of the year it'd be aphid. Scales a bit early for a year. That's woolly aphid. That is all over the tree. Bugger me, it's the first time it's ever had this and it's just on this branch and a little bit here. Ugh, have a look at that. Isn't that delicious? I can't see it, it's just a little bit of fuzzy. What does that look like? One thing is protecting your tree from flying pests and another thing is protecting your tree from aphids, woolly aphids and even woolly scale. This is going to need to be sprayed and now is a good time to spray it in fact because it's just finished setting its fruit and it's going to thin out a lot of it and the one that's on there already, the larger of the fruit that's set, that will remain on there. So what do you spray it with you're asking? Well, make your own concoction from the kitchen pantry. You can use eco oil, that's been used quite often. Pest oil and horticultural oil, the stuff that's made out of petroleum based, I wouldn't recommend it because it's basically a chemical and you're spraying that onto your tree and onto your fruit in fact because it's got set fruit on here. So if you've got woolly aphid, look out for that on your trees. I haven't, I've only seen this tree now in the last two weeks from close up so this is going to need to be sprayed and get rid of that. So I'm not going to do it right here because it's going to take me about 20 minutes to set it up. Either get eco oil or get yourself some uh, soap and water and oil and make it up and spray it on it and repeat it after five to seven days because the home brew is not as strong as obviously but it's still very effective if you apply it liberally all over it and make sure you get it in there. The flowers have finished. These were probably going to set fruit because they're pretty rigid there but failing that, prune it off like that. I'm going to throw it here and give it to the sheep afterwards. So as far as the tree being protected from codling moth, well now's the time once it's set its flowers, uh, its fruit, to get your netting. There's a couple of nettings you can get out there. Don't mind, this one's been lying around for a while. This is the wildlife, 4 mil wildlife bird netting, which is the one you've got to use in Victoria, folks. You can't put the old traditional 10, 12 mil aperture, which is the opening size. That's what I'm referring to, if you can see that. That's the four mil, four and a half mil opening. There's plenty of it. It's, it's in white and black and they come in five metre widths, 10 metre widths, I think, or thereabouts. But also more important uh, for insects like um, fruit fly that can probably get through this, uh, you would need to use insect netting. Now that's the one I recommend, highly recommend, because this is good for the uh, codling moth. I think it's just small enough or small enough to deter it from getting in there. But for fruit fly and things like that, which are quite small and they can get through that, get the insect netting on your tree. Uh, and in areas where you've got um, you know, fruit fly evident in the gardens, you don't want it to take a stronghold. And if it's already been there for a couple of years, it's going to be pretty hard to eradicate. And that's why you've got to be on top of it. Unlike what I've just done here with my woolly aphids, Get it over the top, peg it down properly, get your lures up, get your sprays going as well as a preventative and I use CGWS, it works tremendously well and it's the fruit that you need to look after. Not so much the leaves and the branches as far as uh, apples and pears are concerned, it's the fruit that they attack and in fact they attack all fruit and veggies, uh, the fruit fly that is, but insect netting or wildlife bird netting. Other states of Australia, I know you can still use the larger aperture, I think, unless they've changed the regulations on that. Check it out on our website or go to your local garden centre and support them as well and start protecting your trees because it'll be a shame to lose all your fruit after waiting so long from one season to another to be able to sit there and harvest a beautiful, delicious, very nutritional, highly nutritional, full of uh, minerals, fruit and veggies that you enjoy. Otherwise, like I say, go to the supermarket and eat rubber. Is it rubber or plastic or whatever they are? They look like fruit and veggies, but they're not. Vasilisgarden.com. From me, Vasily, Maresi, and where are my puppies?